The first meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that addressing the believers that when you are being given a gift, a person is giving you a gift, then return a similar gift or something better than that. So the first meaning according to certain scholars is teaching us the manner of giving and receiving of gifts. This is what is being guided. And we see that the verse of Quran is teaching us the manner of giving and receiving the gifts and Prophet Sallallahu in so many translations explains and elaborates on this concept. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and had the mother of believers, she narrates in the Rimzi that Prophet Sallallahu said, exchange presents, exchange presents with one another, presents remove ill will from the hearts. The bad and the harsh feelings will be removed once we are going to exchange gifts, gifts with each other. <coughs> Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in the Rimzi that Prophet said, give gifts to one another because gifts remove malice from the hearts and a female neighbor should not regard the gift of a part of the trotter of a goat to another female neighbor as of no value. That is, the first manner of giving and taking gifts is that if anyone has given us anything as a gift, then we should not look down upon it. We should not consider it as something inferior or something which is unimportant and, no, and not give any importance to it. That is, should not look down to gift given to us, however small and however little it is. Then Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and her reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, the, the manner of the Prophet Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala explains it, the manner was that the practice of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was that he accepted a gift and offered one himself in return of it. So that is the second point. Number one, I said we should exchange gifts, give and take gifts. Second is that whenever we are given a present or a gift, we should not consider it as inferior or we should not look down upon us. And the third is that when we have been or when we are given a gift, we should accept it because it is bad taste. It is bad ethics, refusing to accept gifts is being very arrogant. It is being very pompous. It is being acting very proud that I, I, I don't need it and I'm not bothered about it. And it's being very harsh for the next person. The next person is going to be hurt about it. So we need to accept the gift and then we need to return the gift. Because, you know, as Allah says in Surah Rahman, verse 60, Hal jaza'ul ahsani illa al ahsan. Is the recompense of goodness anything but goodness? So if, Allah, if any person around us has been kind to us, has been caring, has been loving, and the person just remembered us, thought about us, and cared about us, and all the way the person remembered and took the inconvenience of bringing us a gift and in fact might have even sacrificed some of what his own or her own requirements and passed on the gift to us so we need to accept it we need to acknowledge it and then we need to return it as well and here in this verse as Allah says we need to return the gift almost the same level the person gifted us or even a better than the gift we were given. But again, I would need to clarify that what do we mean by something being better? Which gift will be better does not mean that it will be better if it is more expensive, it is more costly, it is a better designer, no. But better means better as far as the intentions are concerned, greater in love has more sincerity with it. There's a greater sacrifice behind it. 
So this is what makes a gift. The intentions, the love, the sincerity, the sacrifice is what makes the gift a better gift. And the best gift which a believer can give his believer brother is the gift of dua, the gift of a supplication. And then to return it is like what? Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Tirmizi and Bukhari that Prophet said that if a present is made to anyone, he has something to give in return, he should offer it. And if he has nothing to give in return, you know, Islam is very practical and the teachings of the Hadith and Sunnah are also very practical. There are going to be times. <coughs> there are going to be times. There are going to be occasions when we might not have anything to return so what should we do if he does not if he has nothing to give in return he should praise him by the way of gratitude and say good word in his behalf whoever did this did what that if the person was given a gift and he did not have anything to return but he did what he said good words and he praised him that whoever did this that he praised him and who said good words fulfilled the claim of gratitude and whoever did not concealed a favor done to him and he was guilty of ingratitude and whoever flaunts a virtue that has not been granted to him is like a man who wears a double cloak of deception. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. So at least if we cannot repay or return the gift then because of any economic problems or issues or any monetary tightness, then at least we need to acknowledge, we need to say words of gratitude and we need to repay in any good form of supplication or anything like that. Like saying Jazakallah, we'll be talking about this in the next tradition. Hazrat Abu Huraira who reports in Tirmizi that Prophet said, whoever failed to give thanks to anyone, that is he was given a gift, he accepted it, he used it very much and then he did not have anything to return it as, but didn't even say thanks. He did not even by word of mouth acknowledge or said good words. Whoever failed to give thanks to anyone, who did a favor to him, failed to give thanks to Allah. So this is being, this is being thankless and not accepting any form of gratitude. And accepting and being thankful is like what Hazrat Usama bin Zaid radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in the Rimzi, the Prophet him guided whoever did a favor to anyone and the recited for his benefactor what? Jazakallahu khaira. May Allah give you a good reward. He also praised him fully through it. So we need to say Jazakallahu khaira. That is the minimum reward or return of the gift. And we're not just going to say Jazakallah. I hear of people who just say Jazakallah. And what does that mean? May Allah give you reward. What sort of a reward? No, this is incomplete. Jazakallahu khaira. May Allah give you a good reward, the better reward, the best of rewards. So this is the complete, the complete words which have been taught by the Prophet Sallallahu And when we are talking to a woman, we say Jazakillah. There is, uh, this is how we talk to a female. And when we are talking to a male, we say Jazakallah. And we are talking to plural to many, we say Jazakumullah. So this is the minimum how we return, need to return the gift. And then another uh, manner of the gift is Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Muslim that whoever offered a sweet smelling flower should accept it, not reject it because it is very ordinary. Why? Because the fragrance is a thing of joy. So. A little thing like a flower which somebody just gives oh, gives over to us as a gift. Look, I brought this flower for you. So we should not reject it because this is the another uh, another words Prophet also said that this 
sweet smelling flower is a gift of paradise and hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala who reported in tirmidhi the prophet sallallahu alaihi said there are three things particularly should not be refused a pillow or a cushion on which we can rest and be comfortable oil which is used to apply to the skin or hair etc and milk and then uh, as far as giving gifts another manner is it will be extremely disgraceful to claim it back hazrat ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and hazrat ibn abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu both they report in abu daud tirmizi nasai and ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever claims back a gift after giving it whoever claims back a gift after giving it is like a dog who ate something and when the stomach was filled up to capacity he vomited it and then licked up the vomit back again so these were the manners which had been taught to all of us by the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in elaboration of this verse the second thing which scholars say the second manner which the scholars say have been explained here are what that if we translate the words it is being said that when someone says hayyukumullah to you hayyukumullah means what may you live long then answer in a similar or in a better form you know what in fact it was a social custom of the arabs that when they used to meet each other they used to greet each other by saying hayyukumullah that may you live long and so the old uh, the order of the verse is to act in a way that when you are meeting somebody and somebody greets you you should answer back with a similar greeting or with better words to greet in return and the greeting taught to all the muslims is salam